Welcome from Euro PCR 2023. My name is Ajay Kirthane from Columbia University. I'm joined here by my good friend and colleague, uh, Javier Eskened from Madrid. And we're here to talk about the DCR4 trial, which uh, you led. And tell us a little bit about what you found. Thank you, Ajay. Thank you for having me. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's, it's very exciting, you know, after, like it happens always that you run a trial, after all the effort of uh, designing it, uh, recruiting centers, enrolling patients, analyzing the data to come with the final uh, results of this study. The framework for the study is reducing contrast in, during PCI, something that is much related to what we call nowadays ultra-low contrast PCI in a way. Uh, something that is very important, of course, in patients who are particularly sensitive to um, iodinated contrast. They may develop the, um, contrast in nephropathy, typically patients that have chronic kidney disease, but also other frail patients. Um, and for this, uh, there, was a, there was a digital solution for, for this that was already in place for several years. That is what we call the dynamic coronary road mapping. And this study was testing the um, efficacy of this device to reduce contrast administration during PCI. You know, I think it's so important for interventionalists to try to reduce the contrast load, as I showed in uh, symposia here at the meeting alone. You know, in the U.S., for instance, the operators use the same amount of contrast in every procedure, irrespective of the risk of the patient. And so I think if we have a tool that we could use to minimize those little tests or puffs or as the Irish say, squirts or other things like that of contrast that really don't, you don't need, then that's a technology that might be able to be helpful, but we needed to do a randomized trial to show it. Um, so tell us about the design and what you actually ended up finding in the study. Sure. So this technology has been already available for something like six years, uh, but there was uh, a paucity of, uh, inf of information about, you know, objective evidence on to the degree that it, it contributes to reduce contrast during PCI. So the study is a randomized clinical trial that allocated patients in two arms. One of them is performing PCI in the conventional way, guided by angiography. And the other one is the, um, the, the arm where the um, uh, operator was having displayed in front of him a dynamic template of the coronary arteries overlaid over the fluoroscopy screen, where he could, after making the first uh, contrast injection, have uh, constantly um, a, a, a roadmap, dynamic roadmap for the coronary arteries to navigate wires, to navigate devices. Now, the um, study was conducted in the US, in Europe, and in Israel, and it enrolled about 350 patients. Um, and the primary point for the study was the reduction in contrast associated to the use of this particular technology compared with the control group. Uh, and there was a secondary point that had to do with uh, the potential reduction in the number of cine angiogram rooms. As you know, the cine angiogram rooms are the ones that contribute more to um, um, x-ray radiation given to the patient and also contributing to occupational, uh, say, exposure to scatter radiation. You know, I think one of the things for folks that have not seen this before is that this is not sort of an add-on thing that you have to plug to the patient or anything like that. This is just part of the x-ray system. It's a product of Philips, uh, proprietary. But the idea is, is essentially you take a Cine picture and it stores that and it stores it in a relative frame in the sense that if you move the table, if you, the, it'll then alert you that the roadmap has changed and you can move back to that uh, gantry position and all of a sudden you'll see the moving angiogram in front of you and you can d d uh, direct your wires that way. One of the things that we have a problem with in our lab sometimes is our fellows are so excited to do the PCI that they take the diagnostic angio and they start trying to wire but there's no reference frame on the screen. So the conventional way of dealing with that is you put a still image up next to you and sort of look at that from time to time. But this is actually that reference image moving so you can really wire in real time without doing additional dye tests. And similarly, when you're placing your devices, you can also do it in that way as well. Um, tell us though, what I thought was most interesting is that across the board, there was a 25 millimeter, redu or millimeter reduction in contrast, but it seemed like in the cases that were the most complex in terms of the vessel uh, lesions and such, that's really where this shown. Yeah, absolutely. So the study was positive. It demonstrated a significant reduction in the amount of contrast. And as you say, roughly in the whole population was about 25 uh, milliliters of contrast in, in the uh, less in the DCR uh, arm group. 
what we did is we, we were interested in understanding the complexity of PCI and for that what we used was what we call the vessel syntax score. So we basically obtained the syntax score uh, points um, that were, you know, that, that um, were associated to a particular vessel that was treated. Influenced, of course, by the fact that it had bifurcations, lung stenosis, etc., etc. And what we found is that when we analyzed the data according to terciles of this vessel syntax score, we noticed that the more complex the PCI was, the larger the benefit of using DCR in contrast reduction. So that means, in a way, you know, the, the, it brings a message that it, I believe it makes sense, is that the more complex your PCI is, and the, the fact that at that time you, you rely more on contrast amplification, the more the, the, the patient benefits because with this technology you give much less contrast. Yeah, well that's, I mean, I think very important, especially as the complexity of patients is increasing. You spoke about ultra-low contrast. This was not a pop, uh, population of patients that had severe CKD because the idea was is to study it in patients in whom the operators are not already making decisions to change. So the fact that you could lower your contrast across the board is, I think, what's kind of compelling about this. I, I think in, in the last couple minutes or so, tell us really quickly, is this something that then operators who have this device, they should turn on for most of their cases? Um, does this enough evidence in that regard, or do we need anything further? Because some people said, well, you need to show a reduction in AKI. I personally don't think that's the case. I feel that if you can reduce contrast alone, that's a great thing. Well, you know, this is, um, this is um, a program, a feature of the angiograph angiographic system that you can, it has no, no, no additional, say, complications for the patient. It's, it comes, you know, um, the learning curve is extremely short. Uh, as you say, the fellows immediately learned about it. And I think that, you know, we use it as a default technique when we are performing PCI. Uh, because the traditional way of guiding our wire navigation was to have in front of us um, a steel frame, a reference frame of, uh, of the angiogram. But of course, it makes a huge difference to see that you are steering your wires uh, in this dynamic template. Uh, and you certainly avoid giving additional puffs of contrast to check if that is a septal or if it is, you know, a, a diagonal or whatever. So my impression is that uh, hopefully this will be one additional tool in this tendency that we have to, to tweak this, guiding our procedure not only on geography, relying more on intracoronary imaging, rely more on the information that we have uh, from physiology, rely more even in the coronary images that we have obtained before from CT and geography or from previous angiograms. And, and I think that in that regard, this is going to be a very, uh, one more tool in the portfolio of the um, ultra low contrast uh, PCI. Well, that's great. I think that's why people come to EuroPCR. And so from EuroPCR 2023, thanks so much for the, uh, for the discussion and I uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, Jay.